What is the Bible? For thousands of years, people have struggled to understand its contents. But for author Rob Bell, there's no longer a problem with that. In his latest book, What is the Bible? Bell sets out to immediately put to rest those age-old questions. And in this review, I'm going to give you my honest impressions of the book, including the good, the bad, and a final judgment as to whether or not you should bother reading it. And if you find any of this commentary helpful, please hit those buttons right there. Now to start with, I want to say that I was very excited to read this book. It caught my eye while I was walking through one of the few remaining bookstores that exist, and I decided to buy it without even opening the cover. And while I knew that this wasn't a great idea and that a book like this could potentially test my faith, I've always been willing to listen to someone with a different perspective and background than mine. And let me tell you, this book did not disappoint in that department. Bell, a former pastor at one of the world's largest megachurches, wastes no time in setting the stage. Based on the book title and the introduction alone, the reader quickly learns that Bell sees the Bible as merely an ancient library of poems, letters, and stories written by humans about what it means to be human. No mention of being God's word or God's revealed nature or having been inspired by the Holy Spirit. It's simply a book about humans for humans, written by humans. In fact, the title of the second chapter is simply, Somebody Wrote Something Down. And while I found this to be a strange way to describe the Bible, especially for, uh, for a Christian or whatever Rob Bell is, I was willing to put my judgments aside since I'd only read a few pages. And to be honest, I've had somewhat similar thoughts at different points in my life. So I was willing to cut him some slack. And surely he had some knowledge that could be of use to me. I mean, he was a pastor for 25 years. Well, as the book progressed, Bell kept my interest levels high. Quickly jumping from topic to topic, he covered both well-known stories as well as a few obscure ones. And along the way, he offered up some engaging interpretations and explanations, some of which are still bouncing around in my head, to be honest with you. And in some of the more interesting parts of the book, he reminds us that the Bible's roots are based in the ancient Middle East, and that it was written primarily by Jewish people to tell a Jewish story from a Jewish perspective. Adding this context, along with lesser-known factoids, Bell tries to shed light on some of the more confusing stories of the Bible. He also makes some good points about how we should approach the Bible in our study of it. With one analogy, he says we should treat it like dancing, allowing it to play its music while we intuitively react to the sounds that it plays. And at other times, we should treat it like a gemologist would, a precious stone, looking at it, studying it from every angle, looking at the different facets, looking for new reflections of light that maybe we hadn't seen before, really taking it in. And while these are potentially good things, unfortunately, they don't make up for the major issues I have with this book. To put it simply, I don't think this is a book meant to bring you closer to your Christian fact. In faith, in fact, I believe the intent of this book is to shatter your prior beliefs to make you more skeptical of the Bible and to put doubt in your mind about everything you were taught. The levels of disrespect, iconoclasm, and apostasy that I found in this book is more appropriate for an episode of South Park rather than a book about Christian spirituality. And I think Bell is fine with that at this point. But for a well-read and discerning follower of Christ, it stinks to the high heavens and it will be quickly detected. Throughout the book, Bell makes bold statements of fact that challenge traditional understanding of scripture, with no supporting references. And then he hops off to the next thing, leaving, leaving you wondering, what just happened? And at other times, he sounds like a 15-year-old boy with his use of slang, and ability to find sexual meaning in the Bible where no one else has found it prior. And in one of his most egregious examples of this, he jumps through several hoops to clumsily interpret Hebrew scripture to, to infer that Moses could still get it up after he had died. And these are just a couple of examples of how the book misses the mark in small ways. There are more, and in fact, here's a short list of them that you could find in the description below if you're so inclined. Now, as for some of the more significant issues I have with this book, I'll mention just a couple. First, when dealing with the most important question of, is the Bible the Word of God? Bell goes on to say things like, Yes, lots of things are the Word of God. The Word of God can be found through books, human words, and experiences. There are lots of words of God, and you should and can listen to all of them. 
In other words, there's nothing unique about the Bible. It's just one of many ways to come to God. And all of that just brings me to the second point, where Bell tells us that the apostles wrongly interpreted the need for Jesus' sacrifice on the cross, and that now, with our modern and enlightened brains, we can clearly see that the kind of God who needs a blood sacrifice would be awful and horrific, as Bell puts it. And just like that, he completely erases all meaning of Christ. He just casually deletes 2,000 years of Christian theology and jumps off to the next bit, hoping that you'll tag along with him. So, on to the final judgment. What started off as much excitement, namely my impulsive purchase of this book, quickly turned into confusion, and then turned into disillusionment, and then overall disgust. Over and over throughout this book, Rob Bell casually drops huge bombs that completely blow up all notions of traditional Christianity, always falling back on the defense of, hey man, the Bible can be interpreted many different ways, but that doesn't hold up to the sniff test for me. Rather than fulfilling his promise to teach you a new way to read the Bible, what he actually does is repackage the same old arguments that people have made against Christianity for hundreds of years. Nothing new here. It's the same old heresy with a brand new book cover. In trying to figure out his own views of the faith, Rob Bell distorts the Bible to the point that it loses all meaning and purpose. And as for Bell himself, he clearly has transcended Christianity, and he's become some sort of universalist. And that's fine. He's a seeker, and that's his decision. God gave us all free will, we're all on our own journeys, and we can do as we choose. It just makes me wish I would have gone a little bit deeper than the book cover before buying it, and I'll take the blame for that. Now, all of this is also just my opinion. Looking at the reviews on Amazon, there's obviously an audience for Rob Bell in this type of book. If you're a woke, liberal-minded Christian, or someone who was once a Christian, but has left the faith, like Rob Bell has, then you might really like this book. But if you're a sincere Christian, who's from a more conservative tradition, who's looking to build up your faith and learn more about the Bible, this is probably the worst book you could ever read. And I don't think Bob Bell would necessarily dis disagree with that, if he was being honest about it. If you're still here, I just want to say thanks for staying till the end. If you liked what I had to say in this video, or if you didn't like it, please engage with me in the comments below. I'd love to hear what you have to say. Let me know where I'm wrong. Let me know where I'm right. We can talk a little bit. And also, if you like what I have to say, please hit the like and subscribe button. And check out one of my other videos.